Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Game Maker. And in the last tutorial, we were going over how enemies could break open these crates and later go through them. So we did not. The en once the enemies broke the boxes, they weren't able to go through them. So we're gonna fix it right now. Uh, we tried to do. Uh, we got rid of instant destroy because we want the player to be able to rebuild these boxes and we tried object set solid but and uh... set it to false but this is it's gonna sound dumb but this is actually how you do it solid equals false i know is that it was that simple i can't believe i missed that but that's basically how you set solid to false so now you go ahead and actually i'm just gonna exit out all this stuff because i don't want you guys to see it and also this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and debug this. Get rid of that. And waiting for it to play. Sorry, <coughs> excuse me. If I haven't been posting tutorials as often lately, but that was due to uh, this vacation. And during the vacation, I've been basically just like playing Skyrim the whole time. And the game is super, super addicting. I don't know if you guys play it, but it's probably one of the best single player games I've ever played. It's got to be. Uh, and it reminds me a lot of Twilight Princess too. Zelda, if you play Zelda. Well, as you can see, the enemies are breaking through the crates. And our player can't go out of the crate still, even though they're broken, which is good. We want that. And I'm just going to die right here. Yep. Okay, I died and I restarted. So that is looking good right now. So now we want. To, actually, I'm just gonna tone the spawners down, just because they're spawning at an extremely high rate, and we do not want that. Uh, that would be like five seconds, so ten seconds, so every twenty seconds. That's a long time. Okay. So, so that'll just give us some time to think and stuff like that. So, uh, we also might want to make this sort of random because we don't want them all just to spawn at the same exact time all the time. It's going to be really, really, I don't know, just, just not very, uh, just very orderly and not natural. So, every time the timer goes off, uh, I'm just going to change the zombie timer time. So, zombie max time. Let's see. Uh, let's let's have a number between 800 and 1,200. That sounds about good. Okay, so we're gonna try to get a number between that. So, uh, random. What's the difference between 800 and 1,200? 400. So, random 400 plus 800. So that will basically get a random number between 0 and 400 and add it to 800. So the lowest possible number will be 0 and add that to 800 is 800. So the lowest possible number is 800 and the highest possible number from this random is 400. So 400 plus 800 is 1200. So the highest number is 1200. So that's pretty much how you do that. Zombie max time. Okay. Pretty simple, right? So now moving on. So we want the player to be able to rebuild these boxes. So the way to do that actually uh, but we want the way we, the player is going to uh, rebuild the boxes is by right clicking on the box but they can't do it from like super far away so I'm just going to make it so there has to be a certain distance the player is from the box so I'm just gonna put a very new variable called uh, rebuild distance equals uh, the diameter of the player sprite is 32, so let's say uh, double that at least. 64. Okay. So rebuild distance equals 64. Okay, so now let's go and add our uh, draw event. And one thing to note if you didn't know this already was uh, if you add a draw event and draw drawing code inside, it won't actually draw the sprite because you're overriding the method or basically the draw event so by default the draw event is supposed to draw your sprite 
but since you overrode it and uh, added your own code in that doesn't draw your sprite, you have to do it here. And it won't draw the sprite unless you do this. So draw sprite image uh, index, I believe. Image index image. Oh, so no, sprite index. Sprite index. Sprite index and image index. So this is basically just saying, okay, I want to draw the sprite that was selected for this object and the current frame at which it is at and at uh, the position of the object. So basically that's that's the draw method by default for all the objects. So now we're going to draw our extra little code that we need to put. And we're just going to say uh, draw green box when reachable. So if uh, sorry my friend trying to talk with me. I'm going to pause it. Okay we're back. Okay so we want to say if uh, well, first of all, we want to know if the player actually exists. So, if object man, no, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. If instance exists, and we want to know if object man exists. Okay, pretty simple enough. Uh, put our curly braces here, and we, we want another if statement. Actually, we can just put an and symbol here. So, the instance of actually no, that's not a good idea because it will error out if we put what I want to in the same if statement. So we actually have to make another if statement and say if object man. Actually, I'm gonna hit myself again. If instance, no, that's a wrong method. If point point distance. Thank you. Okay. If point distance, uh, object man dot x object man dot y uh, x and y oops didn't, don't need another comma there if that is less than uh, rebuild rebuild oh, rebuild distance then it's going to do something so it's going to uh, draw draw green box here so just going to go over this one more time before I, I draw the green box. So it checks first if the object man really exists. Because otherwise, if it doesn't exist, once it tries to do this and find the position, the man x and y position, and it doesn't exist, it's going to error out and crash. And we don't want that for the game. So we just put this code just to be safe. And then we want to check the distance. If the distance between the man and the box is smaller than rebuild distance, we're going to draw a green box around it. So let's get going. So we're going to draw a rectangle. And the top left corner of it, we want actually let's draw, re draw rectangle color, I think. No, actually, we don't want that. So just draw a rectangle. So the top left corner, obviously, is going to be uh, just x minus uh, sprite image width come on image ah uh, sorry just a second oops okay it wasn't image it's bright sprite width I get always get mixed up so divided by two so basically what we're doing is we're getting uh, the edge the edge of the the left edge of the box basically so the first x and y coordinates are going to be the top left so we're basically taking the sprite width, dividing it by two, which is the radius or half the width of, well, that goes without saying, of the box. And we're going to, uh, yeah, uh, get the difference between x and that. So, same thing with y, because we're trying to get the top left corner sprite height this time, divided by two. And we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to get the bottom right. So just we can almost just copy this. I'm just going to add a new line here so you guys can see it easier. Except instead of uh, subtracting, we're going to add. Since x and y coordinates is in the center of the sprite, since we put that or its origin there. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot. We forgot one argument. This is basically our true or false saying whether it's uh, outline or not 
and we want it to be an outline because we don't want it to cover the whole sprite. We just want it to be an outline of green. So that's how you do it. Just set that to true. And it looks like we're running out of time, so I'm just going to debug this real quick. We and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll fix it in the next tutorial. Uh, hopefully it does. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Well, anyways, we'll fix that in the next tutorial. So, thank you for watching. I appreciate a rating, and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.